All right, there we are. So, uh, hey, folks, this is Justin Gaz uh, Ba, and this is the Business Life and Brotherhood podcast uh, or uh, vlog cast. I don't know, it's a video thing. Um, and so, I'm really excited today uh, to have Matt McCall on the show, and uh, we're going to get started. So, Matt, for those folks who haven't yet had the opportunity to meet you or maybe just met you in passing, give us kind of a uh, you know, a little bit of background, where you went to school, what chapter, uh, if, you know, bring us up to speed. Let us know who you are. Sure thing. Well, and, and first I want to say thanks, Justin, for inviting me to participate. It sounds like a really cool idea, and I'm looking forward to connecting with brothers and, you know, whoever else ends up watching this. Uh, so uh, I was um, uh, initiated into AKSI in 2003 from the Mu, Mu Omega chapter at Auburn University in Alabama. Uh, I grew up in Alabama, was born and raised there. Um, and so I was a spring 2003 initiate. Um, shortly after I was initiated though, I did end up transferring schools uh, to move back to my hometown of Mobile. Um, of course, the, uh, the transfer process was, was uh, fairly uh, quick and easy. Uh, so I, I became an active member at the uh, Theta Nu chapter. Uh, at South Alabama. Uh, I was a brother there for another three years and uh, graduated in 2006 and, you know, became an alumni brother. And, uh, you know, I, I had been, um, I had been mildly involved as a student brother, but really got into it much more as an alumni. And I became a Life Loyal member in 2011 and I received the Silver DSA that same year from Mike Dixon. And, uh, you know, I, I have been to, I think, four conventions and, and all of them have been wonderful. And I am now uh, working at Amazon as an associate business analyst, uh, living in Seattle as well and just uh, enjoying life. Awesome. Well, that's, yeah, wow, that's awesome, man. So um, when you were in chapter, you said you got a little more involved, you know, as an alumni. Did you have any leadership roles or committee roles or participate in any of the uh, events as a student member? I, I did. Um, so Theta Nu, in, in contrast to Mu Omega, um, was a much smaller chapter. Uh, when I transferred and became a, a, a brother participating in that chapter, there were only, say, 20 or 25 brothers uh, in the chapter. And it was almost out of necessity after my first year there, which was, um, my, my junior year, um, I, I ultimately ended up having uh, two more years left after my junior year. But uh, after that, there were only enough uh, returning active brothers to basically fill out the e-board. <laughs> and, you know, um, so they said, well, if you want a position, I'm sure we can fit you into one. And so I ended up being a treasurer of that junior year. And then I was historian for the remainder of uh, my active membership uh, at uh, the South Alabama chapter. And so, so the school that you finished up at, that you only had twenty five folks in your in chapter. We yeah we we got a little bit larger as the time went on. We ended up thirty or thirty five, but uh, as chapters go, Theta Nu was definitely on uh, on the smaller side. Uh -huh. Wow. So uh, are you, I mean, that must have been a real close-knit group of folks. Are you still in contact with a lot of those folks uh, to this day? Um, a few of them, yes. Um, I, you know, of course, uh, time passes by and, and uh, you know, definitely once you relocate to basically the opposite corner of the country, it's a little bit harder to maintain some of those uh, friendships. But, you know, uh, I, I, I know that, that if I ever run into any of my brothers, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it'll it'll be like you know enough, so much to catch up on that I'm sure we, you know, would have a great time just you know reminiscing and chatting and, and just you know seeing what's been going on in each other's lives. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, I've heard of you know some smaller chapters like that because you know membership can ebb and flow and leadership can ebb, ebb and flow. And so, uh, you know, do you know are they bigger now? Or are they still running about the same numbers? Um, well, at the time, um, Theta Nu was a few years removed from being reinstated. Um, they later actually lost their charter again, but are now making a third attempt. Uh, I believe they are currently in colony status, so you know they're they're uh, they're, uh -huh. they're here and alive. And and you know, I, I got an email from uh, one of the colonists there uh, a number of months ago, just informing us that 
you know, uh, Theta News back and, and they're, you know, they're, they're at a colony and trying to become a chapter again. So that was, that was great to hear. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, third time's a charm, right? And starting out, they'll <laughs> stay around for for you know a long time to come. Yeah, but even coming in as a colony, I mean, they'll they'll amass a, a good amount uh, to be you know to be installed. So that's awesome. Um, what about let's jump into post college, crossing crossing the United States and jumping around and and uh, um, kind of how you navigated. Uh, some of the different roles and some of the different positions that, that you've had, because I know you've been with a few of the, the big companies and uh, you've been, uh, um, you know, with uh, with some of those contract work companies and stuff. And so you, you've had the opportunity to to work for some some pretty heavy duty firms in our area. Uh, but how did you navigate? Like, what did that look like coming out of college for you? Well, you know, um, none of those heavy duty firms were, were in Mobile. So ultimately I, I did have to re re relocate uh, to, to get those opportunities. Uh, I had a full-time uh, job at uh, a company called Research Strategies, uh, which was a marketing research company uh, directly out of college. Uh, I was there for about a year, a little bit under a year. And then I made the move to relocate to Chicago. Um, and it had all kind of uh, come from uh, a connection that I made when I was in Washington, D.C. for the convention in uh, 2007, which was the year after I graduated. Um, a brother named Angela Brandenburg was uh, very social and active amongst the uh, participants that I met there. Um, you know, different di different activities and, and, and outings that, that uh, were going on. I saw her on, on a few of them. Um, and so uh, we kept in touch after convention uh, here and there. And uh, one one day in uh, January of the next year, uh, she messaged me saying that she was going to be coming down to Biloxi, Mississippi with her company. Uh, Biloxi being about an hour away from Mobile, where I was living at the time, uh, as part of a uh, continued uh, cleanup effort for Hurricane Katrina victims. And so she was down there. Uh, I drove down there. We caught up. And it was there that um, the idea became formulated for me to, re to relocate. Um, you know, I was I was looking for a change, and uh, you know, she she offered her social network, her work network, uh, to me if I would uh, come up and and uh, you know stay there for a week. Uh, it was right around uh, PBLI week that was being held in Chicago, uh, nice. and 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 I'll I'll date myself, but uh, at the time it was still called Success Institute. Uh, I'm sure you I'm sure you know about when it was called Success Institute. Yeah. And, uh, so I was there for a week. The next month. Uh, was sold on the idea of you know uh, coming into a, a very large city that had a lot of opportunity to to sort of grow my career. So let me, let me ask you that really quickly because I'm, I'm not familiar. I've never been to Mobile. I've never been to Chicago. But uh, <laughs> is there? I mean, I'm guessing from the way that you just put that, Mobile smaller. Is that fair? Sure. Mobile is, um, in, in relation to cities in the Northwest, I think it's probably a little bit smaller than Spokane. Um, the city itself has oh. about 100,000 metro area and the four to 500,000 range. Okay, so you could fit a considerable amount of mobiles inside Chicago. That's kind of how that plays out. Inside Seattle and inside <laughs> Chicago, I guess. <laughs> okay. okay, so I didn't mean to get you off track. I just wanted to, for my own edification, I wanted to, to, to jump on that. So yeah. so you made the decided that, and this is great. So you met a brother at convention, connected. Mm -hmm. They came down to your part of town, reconnected, and said, hey, why don't you come come up north, come up to Chicago? And uh, uh, and it just so happened that uh, Success Institute, aka PBLI, was was going on, and 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 you leveraged that opportunity. So so pick pick me up from there. Sure. Well, um, I was there for a week, and uh, you know uh, saw saw the opportunity that awaited there. And you know I, I was living at home, so I, I there wasn't you know a, a lease to break or anything like that. So I just decided a month or two later that I was going to make the trip up to Chicago and, and start living there. Um, and so um, after about a month, I got a, a contract position with an insurance company um, and, you know, just continued to meet more brothers. And, and obviously Success Institute was being held the next year in that city. So I was able to attend that as well. Um, and, you know, this was around 2008 and 2009. 
And economically, it was uh, obviously in the middle of the recession. And uh, I was uh, I was employed that I was looking for, you know, something that was closer to the city itself. And those opportunities weren't quite there at the time. And so um, that's when I decided, well, let's let's, you know, uh, re reevaluate things. I did move back to Alabama uh, for about six months. Um, but uh, shortly, shortly before I moved out of Chicago, in comes another convention, uh, the one in Orlando. And this was the 2009 convention. Um, and I, I met a lot of people from the Northwest, um, Seattle, Portland area. And uh, I, I came back to, to Mobile, um, worked part time for a company there. And, you know, I, I, I always have love for my hometown, but as far as a city to grow and make a career, um, you know, I, I didn't feel like they'd had the best choices for me. So I knew that uh, ultimately um, this was sort of a temporary, uh, temporary thing. And so I did end up moving to Seattle in April of 2010. Um, and it was shortly after that that I got uh, a contract with Google. So, so when you moved to Chicago, you didn't have anything lined up before you got there. You, is, is that correct? No, no job offers. I was talking with okay. some team employees, you know, um, but nothing concrete. Yeah, and then w when you found that temporary job, was that just through a posting or was that through the network that you had established up there? How did that job, how did you find that, that contract work? Um, it was through um, it was through the temp agency. Uh, through, okay. uh, Manpower uh, was the company, so they had. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And then, and then, so moved back to Mobile for for a short stint just to kind of regather. But you had already been down to convention uh, again. Met a bunch of people down at convention, and they all preached to you the good word of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And then you and then you found your way up into Seattle. And when you came up to Seattle, you came here again first without having anything lined up. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that is that is correct. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's that's uh, really incredible. Uh, washing. That's not the recommended way, <laughs> unless you put well, it all of, or if you have a lot of savings. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's something to be said for that though, because you said, "Hey, I'm going to make this happen." And whether whether you write down your goals or, or you keep a journal or whatever you're doing, you're like, I'm going to do it. And then you did it. And then you've, you know, you've positioned yourself well since you've been here versus somebody who says, well, I'm thinking about and maybe if I get a job and then I'll go. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's a true testament, Matt. That's awesome. Um, so so now that you're in Seattle, um, you met a bunch of people through convention. Uh, you know, uh, I'm guessing stayed in touch with some of those folks since you since you made it to Seattle. How did how did navigating um, kind of once you got here and got contract work with with uh, it was Google right that that you were with first? Um, how, how did kind of the, the the Pacific Northwest treat you in that respect of of you know chapter and and then keeping in touch with uh, with folks that you met and then. Uh, obviously, navigating through uh, some of the different firms here. Well, uh, well, fraternity-wise, uh, when I moved here, I, I I came already, you know, with the knowledge that uh, trying to immerse yourself and, and be connected with the chapters in the area, with the alumni in the area, is a great way to do it because I had done it in Chicago. In Chicago. And yeah. I think I had only been in uh, Seattle like permanently for a week or two when I went to Bellingham for. Uh, spring initiation, I think in 2010. Uh, I'm not sure if that's where I met you or, or if I met you some other time. Uh, I think we did the uh, Chuck and I Brewery tour. Yeah, um, that was it. 100. percent You bet. <laughs> so, so I, I, I saw I saw Western. I saw Central. Uh, it took me a, a little bit longer to go to Beta Lambda over in Pullman, uh, Washington State, but uh, met with them as well. Uh, they're a great group. Um, so you know, like. The great thing about AKSI is, is if you know people there, it's it's uh, it makes it much easier to make a transition. But even if you don't know anyone in the city that you're trying to move to, uh, all you have to do is reach out to yeah. local brothers in the area. And if you don't know how to do that, you can contact the Heritage Center. The Heritage Center will will gladly set you up with uh, you know uh, people who are you know 
chapter advisors or sectional directors or alumni members. And yep. they're, they're more than happy to meet with you. They're more than happy to help you get settled. And so to anyone you know, thinking that, that uh, moving across the country is, is so daunting that, that you can't do it, AKTI can really help in that regard. Yeah, no, I really love that. I really love that uh, um, that you took the initiative, right? There's so many folks that that uh, uh, you know we've met, you know, and, and we have the you know, there's still the happy hour every you know third Thursday or so, you know, hypothetically uh, with the alumni chapter, um, and you, you meet people who come in, come and go, and stuff. But uh, but really, that persistence and that initiative. I mean. Um, you really know the benefit of of doing it, which is which is which is awesome. When you when you reach out and connect, and, and you're 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 doing that with intent to to connect with people, just just in general, um, were any of those folks, you know, and and uh, anybody that you leaned on when when you were looking for work or for for advice or anything like that, or did you pretty much spearhead that all on your own too? Um, you know, there were there were definitely people who were recommended to me as uh, you know mentors and and people people like Reggie Ramey, uh, who uh, is is a uh, you know principal for a staff company. Uh, he was you know in the recruiting field as well when when I moved there, and and he he accepted uh, you know looking at my resume and and giving me critiques on it, and he went through a mock interview with me. And he had never met me before, and uh, he I, he was doing all this from Seattle, and I was in Alabama, uh, and so so that that sort of you know it, honestly it it, uh, it it surprised me a little bit with you know the the things that uh, employers and recruiters and, and hiring managers actually look at, and so it was a pretty uh, pretty big help. How do you mean? What what do they look at? What you mean? He he tuned up your resume and said, "Hey, you should you should." more of this, less of that kind of stuff, or tell me more about that. Um, a little bit of that, and, and you know, this, this, this is a bit of a vague conversation because it was uh, seven years ago, but uh, I, I remember he said, uh, you know, employers, you know, an, an interviewer is going to ask why, you know, your, your job history looks the way it does, and, and I had come from, you know, working for four months in Mobile, and prior to that working a year and a half in another company, and, and things are slowly changing as far as, you know, Short-ish uh, job tenures being acceptable or not, but uh, you know it, it. You know, especially when you're young, um, sometimes you need to do a little bit more of an explanation as far as why you have were only at a job for a year or for six months or for eighteen months. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it, it obviously didn't it, it didn't change what I would be doing. You know, how I would be listing on my, on my resume because it is what it is. But you know, it it helped me sort of anticipate that they would be asking about that and then I could come armed with an explanation as far as you know what I was doing. Yeah, that told, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I think it's as one of the things that that uh, you know people coming out of school and stuff is they they don't often take that opportunity at the at, at a really young age to taste different industries and taste different, you know, opportunities. Uh, whether it's you know whether they're in a position that hey I gotta get work and so I'm gonna do this. Uh, until something better comes along or it's, hey, let me try that, let me try that, let me try that. And then when you do figure out what it is you actually have passion for or you actually want to do, uh, then be able to tell the story of, of why the resume looks the way it does. Right. Uh, and that's actually, that's interesting, uh, you know, it's, it's almost a hidden plus of uh, being a contract employee um, because, you know, there's a difference between working at, uh, at, a, a, at a position as a permanent employee for one year and then leaving versus working as a contractor for a year and then leaving because more often than not your contract is limited to a year or however long you worked and so you're you're kind of forced to make that next step and find another position but not only that you know it it does uh you know put you in in uh with a greater chance of working in different industries you know um i, I would say on balance it is Probably a little bit easier to land a contract job than it is a permanent position, and for me, uh, you know, I, I sort of almost like leaned on the contract field uh, to ensure my continued employment. Uh, because once once you work a contract job, it's sometimes 
difficult to get out of that and, and to make the leap into the permanent world. Um, I was at Google for a year and that contract was extended to a second year. Um, and then after that, I needed to find something else because the contract was not uh, renewed past two years. They, they couldn't do that. And then I was, uh, I was at Microsoft for a total of about, uh, wait, no, I had to rewind. First, after, <laughs> I, uh, I, I went to Amazon actually okay. for about five months. Uh, the initial contract was only three months though. Um, I, it ended up being extended indefinitely. Um, and, you know, indefinite means I don't know how long it's going to be. Uh, and then uh, after that, I, I, I ended up with a series of three or four different contracts at Microsoft. And I was kind of walking the tightrope there because, you know, the more contracts you're trying to string together, the, the greater of a chance that one of them's not going to work out or one of them is going to end, end, you know, prematurely. But I was able to stay in some different position there at Microsoft for three years. Um, and uh, it was only shortly after I joined what ended up being my last contract at Microsoft that they, they actually changed their policy on contractors. Um, prior to 2014, I believe, contractors of a certain type could be an indefinite contractor. Their contracts didn't have to end. Um, yeah. Whereas uh, after Satya Nadella became CEO of Microsoft, uh, he made the change that contractors um, were limited to 18 months. And then after that, you had to take a break of six months. Um, you know, oh, it could wow. be out of your company or, you know, staying, you know, unemployed. But after that six months passed, you could rejoin Microsoft as a contractor. Um, ultimately, I ended up going to Expedia after my 18 months or as my 18 months was ending on yet another contract. Um, that was uh, about three months, um, but only about a month into that contract, I um, was contacted by an old coworker of mine from Google who was working at Amazon uh, on a contract and telling me that her team was uh, expanding and that they were converting uh, contractors to full-time employees as well as hiring new full-time employees and was wondering whether I was looking for work. And nice. uh, right before that text, uh, I was not looking for work. And better add right after that, I was. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, that's awesome. So did you did you come in with that on a contract because they were also hiring full time or did you just come in full time? Uh, I came in full time because at the time that this, this hiring was going on, they were not going to hire new contractors. They were just converting people from contract to full time as well as hiring new people, but they were going to have, have them yeah. full time to start. So, so you made that contact with your initial contract from your first from your first gig up here in Seattle is that is that did I hear that right yes from Google yeah. yes that's awesome that's so awesome um, so are you doing like it sounds like it sounds like you're a networking master this is what the this is what I'm gathering is that you figured out you figured out how to you know reach out and connect to people um, and it, you know if whether or not you're comfortable with me using that word or not, you know, network master. But um, are you doing stuff? Do you, do you are you taking initiative, uh, or is there certain things that you do to to reach out and connect with people, or is this just something that you've you've kind of naturally put together? Because it sounds like you've built some really great relationships with folks. With uh, uh, I don't know if you're being purposeful and and, and with intent, or uh, if it started out that way and just and just grew as it has. Tell, tell us a little bit more about what that looks like for you so that if, uh, you know, so other people can kind of emulate and, and pick up on that because you've done really well. Well, um, a, a bit of it was probably uh, natural out of necessity. You know, um, you know, I, that there, there has been two times now that I've moved to a city without a job <laughs> and uh, you know, you, you, you have to find many different ways to, 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 you know, put yourself out there. You can't just be on monster.com or Craigslist all day applying for jobs um, because, you know, not only is that only one method, it's one of the least effective methods of finding a job. Uh, yeah. And, you know, at, at the time I had moved, I, you know, was looking for a job quick, quickly, um, you know, rather than just taking my time to find what I really, really wanted. Um, yeah. 
I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for everyone, but um, that's one reason that I sort of um, was able to, to um, th that I felt like I needed to uh, talk to as many different uh, temp agencies, contract agencies as possible. Um, you, but go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, and I was going to say, as far as you know, as far as the the networking, you know, um, once once I realized how AKSI can be a great way to to you know uh, increase your professional skills. Actually, my my first job that I ever had, which was in college, um, was a position at uh, Wachovia, um, and so our chapter president uh, had recently or was preparing to depart his position there to to go on to something else and uh, brought it up in a chapter meeting saying, hey, so here's a, here's a position that's you know, 10 to 20 hours a week. You know, it's, it's working for a financial advisor. If you need a job, you know, like, you know, I would love that or rather succeed me in that position. Yeah. And that's how I got that. That's how I got my first you know, part-time job in college. And so once, awesome. once I figured out that, that can work, you know, um, that, that was something I went to, tried to go to uh, in the future, yeah, um, I really, I, I really love the fact that you put yourself in the position where you had to succeed, and I think that's, I think that's so, so impressive and so important that there, you moved to cities without, without really knowing people, without having a job, and you were like, hey, guess what? I'm here, and now I have to win. This is how I'm gonna do it. I mean, I'm just blown away. Um, well, let me ask you this: with, with, with. Uh, well, two things. First, first, foremost, uh, you know, was this kind of work, this line of work? Now that you're 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 uh, where you are now, is this something a direction that you always saw yourself going, or is this something that 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 kind of um, kind of ebbed and flow and built itself? I mean, are you are you passionate about what you do, or or do you view this as just a a vehicle to get you where you want to go? Well, it, it, it took a while to to really find like a career path for me, actually. I mean, these contract positions were all in the tech field. Um, but, you know, I was, uh, so at Google, I was doing, uh, you know, I was calling businesses to make sure that their uh, information on Google was, was correct. And I did that for a year. And then I did some uh, back office work for a year, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of working like with data, which which I kind of knew was my my. Hold on, hold on. The, the Google, the, the, those are real phone calls. The people that call you to make sure that your Google listing is okay. I always thought I was just getting called by a robot. Well, this is uh, specifically for Google Maps, and so so what what we did was whenever we got a report from some internet user that the business was closed or the business oh. was. Okay. Uh, they have the wrong address. So, so the, phone, call. <laughs> the phone calls I'm getting yeah. probably are scams. Then that's that's what that's kind of thing. Draw the line here. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I just need to clear. I just you know a little selfish uh, there. So um, well, we we would say we were from Google Maps. So so you know if if you're if you're getting phone calls that that sound like it's just could be anyone. That's that's not not Google. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so, so the tech field, you kind of just ebbed and flowed into this, into this tech field and, and without getting yourself into trouble, uh, you know, what, what kind of, what kind of work are you focused on now? I mean, I, you know, I know you work for a monster of a company, so, uh, but can you share a little bit about, you know, for, you went from call center at Google through contracts and, and what are you doing? What are you doing primarily now? So uh, the, the primary I'm with, I'm with now is uh, support operations for FBA. Um, fulfillment by Amazon, and so this is Amazon service that allows uh, people who want to sell their products on Amazon to also let Amazon take care of the shipping and returns and customer service. And um, when, when I when I rejoined Amazon last year, we were looking into you know um, a request from sellers to you know fix something that we had potentially messed up for them, whether we lost one of their items or had damaged one of their items, or if uh, we had accepted a return of an item that they didn't think we should have done. Uh, we were looking into those and seeing, you know, whether we needed to give something back to the seller. Um, and so yeah. after about a year of that, uh, I started to transition more into, you know, um, working with uh, the managers as far as uh, SQL and, and uh, data requests. So my title now is associate business analyst, 
Uh, I also, you know, will be doing a bit of uh, QA work on the associates that, you know, are, are working these requests as well. Um, and so this, this is definitely more in the direction that I see my career progressing. Uh, I, I had, had struggled with trying to find the balance between, you know, working with people and data, which, you know, is, is something that I, like, uh, you know, I was in college and graduated with a marketing degree. But my favorite course oh, yeah. in college research, which is more on the you know analyzing side of it, um, you know, and and some people think of marketing graduates or marketing majors as, as salespeople or or something like that, and and I like working with people, but I don't like trying to sell things to people, <laughs> and so that that wasn't really the direction that that I wanted to go, and and out of college it was it was interesting because uh, most of the job listings that you know were quote unquote marketing were actually just sales and they were outside sales right. and they want to you know yeah. go to events and, and try to sell sell things to people on the street or in the store or at a game and it was uh it was not appealing to me at all and so after college it was a little bit difficult to really uh start my 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 path down that way yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i uh I, I you know when i looked at like marketing you know reach out to people who are in marketing uh, you know, I always find kind of the uh, surface level answers that I'm that I'm looking for, uh, or they're they're talking about sales, and and what I'm thinking of is analytics. Uh, you know, understanding where where people's attention is, how to best you know capture you know their attention, and 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 what platforms and what arenas and what the what the numbers look like. Um, so that's that's super interesting. Uh, with with all the kind of stuff that you've you've done, putting yourself in those 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 positions, um, you're really forcing yourself to to succeed in a way. If you could go back to to college, or, you know, or right before you graduated, or right before you entered the job market, um, what what are two pieces of like real tangible advice that you could you know go back in time and give yourself? Hmm. Yeah, that's hmm, interesting. Um, you know, I so I was uh, I was taking the scenic path. I, I guess you could say through sort of the latter half of college. I was, uh, you know, I was uh, taking, you know, three classes a semester. You know, nine to twelve credit hours, and I ended up. <laughs> it, it took me five and a half years to graduate, um, but the most most of that was because I was. Uh, you know, not taking full loads for for a couple of years, and and I would say that I didn't really, I don't really think that was necessary. Uh, I think I probably could have handled a higher course load and been done in four, in say four and a half years or or, or five years. Um, but at the same time, uh, part of me thought I had a bit of a, a buffer because I went into college at seventeen. Oh yeah. And, uh, I I also graduated on my twenty third birthday. <laughs> <laughs> So for any any time that you got ahead of yourself, you uh, uh, you made up for in in in, uh, in uh, the college experience. Um, so okay, so so you think you would go back in time and tell yourself to you know kick yourself in the butt and hurry up a little bit? And then uh, uh, what's 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 one other tangible that you would that you would throw out there and say that hey after after getting to where I am now from there. Uh, to do it faster, you know, from everything that you've that you've learned, uh, is there is there anything else that you would, uh, you know, any other piece of advice you would give your younger self? Um, you know, I would I would probably also say um, know know more about uh, your financial situation. Oh, okay. uh, you know, I I I was uh, I got a full scholarship to Auburn first year or two. Um, but I, I did use loans to to complete the remainder of the education. And, and not only that, it, it's just, you know, uh, I, I think I could have, uh, you know, not only during college, but after college, uh, you know, uh, spent yeah. and saved money wisely and, you know, even started investing earlier, you know, investing, uh, you know, even a little bit of money per month is, you know, what, is something that might might be slightly uh, you know, not not so fun in the short term, but but has super super great benefits in the longer term. Uh, and we only started to uh, realize like 
all the tenants and, and the facets and stuff and uh, this kind of stuff about a year or two ago. Yeah, and so, I was actually, I'm so glad you brought that up because as soon as you said it, as soon as you said it, I remember uh, seeing a post from you that, that was uh, uh, something on Facebook about, hey, I'm, I'm finally getting, you know, getting my act together around around my budget. Or it was, you know, obviously much more eloquently put and, and, uh, and your words, not mine. But you, you had said something about that. And it's, it's interesting that you say that because that's on, on a few of the interviews that I've that I've that I've done. Uh, that's a sentiment that that keeps coming up. And what's interesting is, is teach that in high school and they don't really teach personal finance in, in, in college. You really have to have a, uh, a parent or a mentor or somebody who, who illustrates those things to you early on. Uh, otherwise, it's it's figured out on your own and, and that can be really hard. And, so. and it's dangerous for someone who's taking on, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in student loans. I was actually very lucky to have only done about twelve thousand dollars, and part of that is is due to the the time frame that I was in college, which was two thousand and one to two thousand and six. But also mm -hmm. that I went to a state school um, and also had some of my college paid for. Um, but you know, I can't uh, imagine being in the situation where I am now, except having fifty thousand dollars more in student loans. <laughs> Right, right. It's crushing. It's crushing. It's one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues, you know, right now is uh, car loans and student loans and credit card debt. And it's just, it, it could be crippling. Um, we should actually, you know, get back together sometime and maybe uh, dive into that and, and show some folks how, when we have more time, show some folks how, how they can, you know, get a grip on that. Um, I wanted to ask you too, are there, uh, uh, I don't know if you're listening to the podcast or, 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 or what you're doing, but is there anybody, uh, whether you know them personally, whether they're in chapter or not, or is there anybody uh, that you follow that uh, who uh, who are you taking advice from? Who who is uh, who are you listening to that's that's got a bug in your ear that's that's got you you know going leveling up, if you will. Well, you know the uh, the last podcast I listened to was S Town, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure that's uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that's appropriate for this uh, for this uh, video, uh, but I, I will give a shout out to uh, someone who's actually an AK Psych brother. Um, I only ever met him once and haven't talked with him in a while, um, but his uh, his name is Nick Loper. Uh, he is a brother out of I believe the Bay Area in California. Okay. Uh, he has uh, what I believe has turned into a very successful podcast on uh, side hustles, and his podcast is called Side Hustle Nation. Uh, and so, what, what, hold on, hold on, hold on. It, I, it came through real scratchy, so I'm going to stop talking and tell me again uh, what that what that podcast was. I'm going to mute. So sure. Uh, so the the podcast is called uh, Side Hustle Nation, and so a side hustle basically is. Anything that you do outside of your daily nine to five to be an entrepreneur to to make more money, and he he, you know, did it did it himself honestly with with this podcast. <laughs> uh, it was a side hustle, and then it became his you know prime activity. And he he's he's got many different hands and many different pots, but this is a big part of it. And uh, you know, uh, it, it it's it's naked side brother and and someone who obviously knows a lot about business and a lot about how to succeed. And so if anyone is looking for yeah. you know, to, to become an entrepreneur, starting small and gradually growing it into something that you can afford to become your own boss, uh, that's what yeah. I would highly recommend. 100%, 100%, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, from listening to that, have you started a, a, a side hustle because of that podcast? Do you do you do you have anything else you're doing, or are you focus just on work and play? Well, n not not at the moment. Uh, so I'm I'm uh, you know I'm I'm currently in like savings mode, uh, and you know not not to say that you can't save and earn more income at the same time, but right now my primary career focus is putting what I can into my current job. And and I, I feel like it's it's really paid off yeah. in the past several months because I was promoted recently. You know, I got a pay raise, I got more benefits, uh, and you know, I became a quote unquote uh, bona fide uh, business analyst. And you know, awesome. not only on Amazon, but you know, if if I ever you know need to venture out of the Amazon world, um, you know, going down you have that under your belt, yeah. 
uh, you know, I, I do I do business analysis versus I do. Oh, I don't really know how to explain it, but that we do this. <laughs> that that that's yeah, yeah. how I felt like most of my jobs were. You know, like we do very specialized work that that sort of is applicable to this one job, but doesn't really translate specifically <laughs> to something else outside of the company. <laughs> Right, right. Awesome, awesome. Um, outside of outside of kind of work and what you're doing now, where where else can people like if randomly to run into you on the street, where where's somebody most likely to find you? Uh, probably somewhere along uh, the western shore of Elliott Bay. <laughs> uh, okay. and I, I, so I live in uh, West Seattle, uh, very near uh, Alki Beach. And uh, my office is in Lower Queen Anne, right off uh, Elliott Avenue. And so I was looking for ways to cut down on my commute because uh, I, I don't own my own vehicle, but I, I normally uh, had been busing. Uh, and usually that takes over an hour each way because the I bus. Have to go first downtown and then transfer to another bus. Uh, and and I, I have to say I, I, I need to increase my frequency of this, but I have started biking more to work. Awesome. Uh, and it's, it's it's fairly beneficial, uh, not only health wise, but it, it's kind of uh, it, it actually cuts down on the time that I commute. Uh, I can normally do it in about fifty five minutes, whereas with the bus it can be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, uh, especially That's awesome. lately. <laughs> That's awesome, and 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 that brings some of the. That, you know, I wanted to, you know, we're, we're running a touch short on time, but some of the stuff I wanted, and we'll probably, we'll have to have you on again and, and uh, uh, touch base with you, but, because uh, I know that you've, you've had some uh, athletic pursuits, you know, with, uh, uh, I, I can't remember if it was uh, 5Ks and, and some uh, uh, and cycling and stuff and, um, you know, talk about kind of how, how that all uh, came together for you and doing those things. But I had the, the one last, you know, I wanted to ask too, is if somebody, you know, kind of the last question, you know, if somebody, um, if somebody sees this and they're like, man, Matt's done a lot. He's got an interesting take on X, Y, Z. I want to connect with him. What's the best way for folks to, to reach out to you, to even reconnect with you if they haven't, if they haven't seen you in a little while, or if maybe it's some, some alumni or somebody else seeing this thing, or maybe a student member, what's the best way for them to, to contact you? Well, uh, you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. I think, uh, you know, for a uh, get back in touch perspective, those are the, the two easiest ways to reach me, you know, socially on Facebook, professionally on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to reconnect with brothers. I actually, uh, I actually ran into Eric Roser the other week uh, up in Ballard. I uh, hadn't seen him in a little while, um, but, uh, you know, we, we were both in the same place and, and I'm like, oh, hey, it's Eric, you know, and then we, we yeah. started catching up and, uh, you know, it was a good time. 100%, man. And that's, that's awesome. I really appreciate you, you giving folks the opportunity to reach out. And it's so funny. That's, that's kind of the reoccurring theme is like, yeah, socially on Facebook, professionally on LinkedIn. And, and uh, those are what those things are for, right? So that's awesome. Uh, is, is there anything, uh, anything else that we didn't touch on that you wanted to be sure to, to, uh, to talk about? Or uh, um, you got any, anything, uh, uh, events or anything coming up here in the next little while you wanted to give a shout out to? Well, you know, uh, so so with with your with your last your last question, I thought you were going to go down the path of if there's anything that you would say to people wondering how they can succeed or or make it professionally. I thought you were going to go down that direction, and I had yeah. an answer prepared, but I kind of wanted to say it anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, do it. Let's do it. I love it. It's it's just it's just one it's just just one quote that I feel like. Uh, very succinctly uh, captures the essence of, you know, how I've been able to do to do certain things I've done, uh, and and the quote sort of varies by who tells it, but it's basically like, uh, eighty percent of success is showing up. Um, people say it was Woody Allen that said that. Um, whoever actually was the first person to say that, what 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 I take from it is if you if you put yourself in situations where you can succeed. You know, not only is that the only way you really can succeed, but it, you know, it, it, it puts you amongst the people that can help you. And, and you know, that's how that's one thing that, that helped me a lot in the AKSI. Like I was looking for ways to get more involved. So I just started showing up to events. 
I was, I, you know, I, I went to alumni meetings, I went to, you know, social events, happy hours, yeah. and, you know, uh, that, that's, that's the biggest thing that, that uh, helped me when I was looking to network as a brother, you know, network job-wise, you know, go to networking events, uh, go to, you know, um, industry events if you're interested in a certain industry, you know, they have free events, free socials, and that's the best way to meet people, just, you know, yeah. by showing up. A hundred percent. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, it, it just, the, the, uh, I don't know what happened with the internet connection, but it went a little buggy right in the beginning. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, uh, I'll pause myself out here and just take a breath and then repeat that quote. Cause I want to make sure that people heard it. Sure. Well, uh, in, insert, insert whatever high number here, 80% 80 of success is showing up and, you know, just, just be there, be present. Uh, put yourself in the position to succeed and you'll find that you're capable of more than you thought. That's awesome. That's awesome, Matt. Well, hey, I uh, I really appreciate you, you making the time. And I know that we tried to do this once before and we had some some technology issues. So I'm glad we could reschedule and, and make it happen. I'm going to do my best to be technology uh, tech, uh, technologically savvy and uh, uh, put your LinkedIn down, you know, in the show notes there. So if somebody does want to reach out, they're, they're able to connect that way. And um, yeah, it's been a blast, man. I you. you, you shared so many great tips and, and uh, just really impressed by the way that you've, you've been able to negotiate your way through the, through the madness post college and, and do so well for yourself there. So I uh, really appreciate you having on, uh, on the show, man. Hey, thanks so much, Justin. I'll yeah, talk absolutely. To you soon. Talk to you soon.